Good evening, everybody. This is a, an online, a little online tutorial about your online discussion, so that's quite fitting. What we've got here this evening is going to be three short videos talking about the each separate post for your online discussion. If I keep looking off over to that side, it's because there is an audience in the classroom um, who've declined to participate, so I might just, <laughs> my attention might go over there every so often, but I'm going to try and address all of you through this online um, tutorial. So basically we are looking at the second assessment which is the online discussion and the way this works is that you have a discussion that's posted in three separate sections. There are three threads and one week in December I will put up on Moodle the three different titles for the three threads of the discussion. You can use a Word document to do drafts, you can sh shift things around and then you can cut and paste it into there. So it isn't a once in, a one off, get it right um, and submit it. You can cut and paste drafts that you've done already and I can look at drafts and talk to you about those in the meantime. But the way it goes is that each section of the discussion is about 300 words. It's a thousand words in total, so what you're looking at is breaking it down into three separate sections of a roughly equal word count. Throughout the three posts you will be referencing, uh, particularly in the second post where you look at the research, but you only have to put one reference list at the end of your third post and the reference list doesn't count in your word count. So it's a thousand words in total plus your reference list at the end one time. Okay. So the online discussion then, the brief, it relates to an experience of training provided by employers detailing how this will be integrated into practice for the benefit of the setting. Really, that pretty much sums up what this is all about. What it is, is a way of starting to acknowledge your professional development alongside your academic learning. And what we're looking at is we recognise that you do a lot of training in, in work which does contribute to your practice and your ex excellence as a professional. Um, and how to actually draw out of that the academic links, the theoretical background that makes it so clear as to why that improves your practice. I'll always at this point, several people in the group say I haven't actually done any training. So if you do have that issue, it is possible to use one of the modules from the foundation degree as your training. So you might do, say for example, observing and assessing. Um, but you might have done training within your workplace. So I'm going to start talking about this, and this is going to be three separate, three separate posts because the files are too big to send to Moodle or by all in one go. But throughout, I'm going to refer to a couple of examples that we could take. So for example, I'm going to talk about maybe something very practical that you could implement, like uh, first aid training, which might have impacted on your practice. We might use the example of, say, the observing and assessing module if you're somebody who hasn't had the opportunity to do much training in your workplace. And then we might use um, an, an example of a workplace training that somebody has undertaken, such as effective use of prose with pen and line. Okay. So, coming to look first at the, out, the, the learning outcomes, analyse literature relating to best practice, reflect on personal practice and provision. So what we're looking at here is we are taking the course, as an overall thing, we're taking the course and we're considering what impact is it going to have on what happens day to day in improving provision in your setting. And obviously that's going to be evidence-based because that's the literature bit. So keep those two um, learning outcomes in mind as you're working the way through. So let's start with post one. A very good place to start is at the very beginning. And the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to select a training course. Okay? Select a training course. And like I say, that could be something as practical and as functional as some first aid. It could be the observing and assessing module or another module from the um, college course. Or it could be some quite in-depth training that you've done, such as um, effective use of praise. And what you do is you talk about why that is relevant to your setting. So, why is it relevant to the setting? So, for example, if you were going to talk about 
first aid, which is a very practical subject. You would be talking about things like meeting health and safety regulations. You would be talking about the team being able to work effectively to fulfil the welfare requirements. You would talk about how important it is for all of the team to have a specific set of skills in order to safeguard the children within your setting. You might talk about sharing responsibility and being able to work much more equally within the team without always having to um, look to one person, make you more flexible about visits, etc. So that might be a, a clear rationale for something very practical like that. If it's something like observing and assessing, you might talk about how um, the observing and assessing is important for informing your practice, for influencing the way you plan, for you getting to know the children, and, sim and your rationale for that would be similar to something like the in-depth training, such as effective use of praise, which would be talking about improving practice, quality improvement, and you might refer to some of the quality improvement frameworks to Ofsted um, inspections to the EYFS to talk about what are the standards of excellence in terms of those types of practice. So that's a, a sort of a, a brief bit of your first post. Why is it relevant to your particular setting? Sometimes people have picked something that an Ofsted inspection has picked up, for example, as an area for development. And then on and then then talk briefly about the impact it's had on your personal practice. Okay, how it has affected you as an individual. So, this could be anything to do with, for example, the role that you take in the team. Has it made you take more of a lead or be more confident? Has it made you take more responsibility? Um, in terms of your colleagues, it might be something to do with um, it might be something to do with the status that you have within the team, or very significantly, it might be to do with your knowledge growing and your confidence, your confidence to lead practice, your confidence to model to colleagues, your confidence to talk to your colleagues about about standards of excellence. Sorry, I've, written, I've just dropped off the bottom there. Knowledge and confidence, it says at the bottom. Right, okay, so that's where you're going to talk about the rationale, the rationale for how it is impacted on you as a practitioner and an individual. And then consider how, it, how effective it's going to be in terms of implementing this in your setting. And that's going to be what you move on to next. So the sorts of references for this that you will be including in this first post, which won't be lots and lots of references, but you'll need to include a few, will be things like, for example, health and safety frameworks or welfare requirements for something like first aid, or it might be a few bits, a couple of references about the importance of effective use of praise or how, it, how good settings use um, observation to inform planning if you're doing observation and, observation and assessment or effective use of praise for that bit. And then when you impact on your personal practice, you might have, say, a reference about how teams work together, or you might have a reference about how increased knowledge or confidence improves your personal practice. That, that's the sort of scope of references that you might include in that first post. And you don't need to worry about concluding it or rounding it off because it's the first bit of three sections. So now we're ready to talk about section two.